Hello, 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 and welcome back. It's Chris. I'm here at Second Glass, as per usual, in the cellar. It's Cellar Chats. It's the weekly wine flights. And I'm here on a Tuesday again. So back to the regularly scheduled programming, if you will. Um, this week, as it is continuing to be December, which I don't see it changing until this month is over. That's just how these things work, apparently. That's how, that's how the calendar works. Uh, we are continuing some fun holiday flights. We are doing French this week, and we're kind of running the gambit of some fun stuff that I personally really love. So let's let's talk a little bit about it. So we're going to kick it off, and I know the first thing you're going to think is, it's really not season for that, Chris, but yes, it is. We're going to kick it off with a little rosé. This is Trinkvidal's Tavel. Um in my personal opinion, one of the greatest rosé regions in the world. It's a style of rosé that I really love. Uh, we'll get into that more. Following that up with the ever so lovely Cabernet Franc from Saumur Champagny from the lovely folks at Le Petit St. Vincent's. Uh, and then we are ending on a lovely structured note with Domaine de Justice, their Bordeaux Superior. Just really delving into the holiday vibes the cool weather it's chilly out i'm loving it i know i keep saying it every week but i do love it it makes it feel like the holidays and you know what the the vibes are that's all the kids care about these days so let's just you know let's embrace it enjoy it it's all about the vibe all right let's kick it off trick the doll um really cool stuff here so i'm pretty sure we've featured this on the call before i don't remember when or how long ago it doesn't really matter but Tavel is located in the Southern Rhone, uh, surrounded by a lot of very famous villages that make incredible red wines. But Tavel is a exclusively all rosé AOC. So in order to hold the label Tavel, it has to be rosé. You can come from there, but if it's not rosé, it cannot be called Tavel, which is pretty unique. There's not a lot of places like that in the world. Um, it is primarily Grenache. Uh, I mean, again, we're in the Southern Rhone. That is the king of Southern Rhone grapes, Grenache, at least for the time being. Um, but, you know, we can go down that rabbit hole another day about climate change and how Grenache may not make sense in the future. Anyways, for all intents and purposes, Grenache is king here, and that is the basis of this of this wine. Uh, Trinkfidel has long been brought in by Kermit Lynch, uh, I believe among one of the, some of the original producers that Mr. Kermit uh, brought on. They are incredible wines. Um, you know, the thing that Tavel stylistically and the way it's done and everything about it does the thing with rosé that most rosés don't, or at least what I think most people think rosé is or want rosé to be, which is it's got, again, I've talked about this a lot too, it's got structure, it's got spice, it's got body. This is actually a very warming rosé. It makes so much sense at this time of the year because if, if we really want to have the conversation, oh, rosé doesn't make sense, you know, when it's cold outside, well, you know, you don't stop drinking white wine when it's cold outside. You don't stop drinking cocktails, you know, that are iced or have been stirred in ice just because it's cold outside. So there's no reason that you can't drink a lovely rosé, especially one like this. I mean, look at the color of that. It is absolutely gorgeous. Definitely more depth, more fruit, more flavor, more texture, you know. It is not a poolside sipper, which is good because I don't want to sit by a pool right now unless it's indoors and heavily heated. Um, on the nose, you get this kind of like crushed strawberry, raspberry note kind of thing going on. There's a stony minerality to it. I mean, in many ways, Tavel is, it really is white wine a white wine-esque wine for red wine lovers because it drinks and tastes more like a proper red wine, but you can serve it chilled and it's a little more refreshing than a red wine. So that makes a lot of sense for like salads and entry dishes or lighter, you know, poultry or things of that nature. Or if you just really want to enjoy a lovely glass of wine, which who doesn't? I mean, if you're watching this and you don't want to enjoy a glass of wine, you tuned into the wrong station. Mm. Yes, that is the stuff. Oh man, that is good. Lots of stoniness. Again, more of that like kind of crushed brambly raspberry strawberry. 
there's a beautiful texture and grip to the lime and there's a little bit of tannins here. Um, I don't know the exact extent of skin contact and maceration that it goes through, but I'd say it, it's a decent amount because there is some mouthfeel and tannins there. And, you know, just looking at the color, Grenache is not a dark colored wine. You know, it can make big and rich and heavy wines um, if treated right and, you know, harvested when it's super, super duper ripe. But that takes a long time on the skins and a lot of like sugars. This has plenty of freshness. I mean, I want to say it's probably 12, 13% alcohol. Man, is this good. I love it. Again, that is Chateau de Chocvedel. Their Tivol. Lovely, lovely stuff. Um, if you think rosé is only for summertime and makes no sense in the winter, I challenge you to drink that and tell me otherwise. Because that is a winter rosé through and through. All right. So we're moving our way up. We're taking off from the southern France in the Rhone. We're going to head across the country and we're going to head into the Loire Valley, into the center, into the middle Loire as they'll refer to it, off to Saumur Champagny to have a little Cap Franc. Now I've said this before, I feel like I'm just like a broken record. I just re-say things over and over again, but you know what? That's okay. I think that's just part of life. Um, Cabernet Franc might be of the French grape varieties, outside of maybe Syrah, uh, my ideal winter red wine from France. Um, it's got plenty of structure. It's got good tannins. It's got dark fruit to it, but it's not overly heavy. It's very savory. There's always like an herbaceous edge to it. Um, you know, whereas like Cabernet Sauvignon, while I love it, um, it can be a little bit heavier and denser and it's maybe a little bit overwhelming for me. I don't eat a heavy red meat diet, so maybe that's why. Um, but Cab Franc just has this like warming sensation. It's like spicy, peppery herbs and black fruits, which is essentially all you're getting in this and it's fantastic. Mm. <coughs> Yes, that is the good stuff. Silky, little bit of grippy, almost like a, it's more in the realm of what I would call a, kind of velvety tannins, not so much like silky tannins, and it's not like hardcore grippy tannins, and it's not, it's not like drinking like a Nebbiolo or something, where it just, I feel like you put a piece of sandpaper in your mouth. This is pretty like velvety. It's kind of crushed velvet, like that lovely feel, maybe like a, a crushed velvet poster. If any of you are familiar with those, those are fantastic. I had a friend growing up and his, his mom had a crushed velvet poster of Elvis. It was pretty spectacular. It was about as suave and delightful as this wine, which is pretty amazing. All right, again, that is Le Petit Saint Vincent, their Sommier Champagne. Cab Franc, on to the last bad boy here for this week. Domaine de Justice, their Bordeaux Superior. Uh, this is, if I remember correctly, maybe on the back of it. <coughs> Excuse me. I want to say it's Cabernet Sauvignon dominant with some Merlot and maybe a touch of Cab Franc. Just depends on the vintage. Um, but generally speaking, I think it is cab sob dominant uh these guys domaine de justice is a second label to um uh, respi medvi which is a chateau bordeaux house based in and around grave so on the left bank so more of a cabernet like centric home oh wow there it is that is bordeaux in a nutshell right there that is what bordeaux smells like Black, dark berries, a little plumminess. There's <clears throat> there's that lovely like cassis aroma, a little bit of like a fennel licorice. Very, very subtle, not heavy oak, vibrant and fresh. Really pretty color, kind of on that like ruby turning towards slightly purple. Mm. Definitely more structure than the Cab Franc, more depth. A little more broadness on the palate, but still not an overwhelming wine. I mean, 
I just want to like come in, maybe have some burrata to go with the tavel, and then maybe you move into one of the small plates, any of them, honestly, to go with the Cab Franc, and they round it out with either like the Sofro burger or the, you know, I think they're doing a filet right now. It might be, I can't remember if it's a filet. It's, it's a type of steak. Don't question me. Or literally anything. Just go with what you love. The wines are great. Celebrate the lovely French wines. And before we round out, uh, I did want to show, I think they, I think Celeste posted it the other day, but their New Year's Eve menu is out and it looks spectacular. Look at that gorgeous butte. Uh, lovely wine pairings, optional. You can do food only or food and wine. That will be a great time, a brilliant way to celebrate the end of the year. Be safe, be smart, stay warm, celebrate your friends and family. And I will see you all next week. Bye.